thinking about buying an Airstream travel trailer in 2022? We know a thing or two about that. About a year ago, we bought our brand new 2021 Airstream Classic right off the lot. And there was a lot of information that we did not know and had to learn along the way. And today, about a year later, we get tons of questions about what advice would we give, knowing what we know now, to somebody buying an Airstream. So, we put together a list of our top 10 things we wish someone would have told us. Make sure you stay till the end because number 10 is something that I haven't heard anybody else talk about, but is a serious truth that you want to know to avoid burnout. It's not exactly a secret that Airstreams are on the pricier side of a travel trailer. But number one on our list is that you're probably not budgeting enough for your Airstream. Beyond the purchase price, you're going to need to allocate some funds for all of the stuff you're going to need on your first trip. After we bought our Airstream, we had a running joke that it seemed like every time we thought of something new that we needed for the Airstream, it was another thousand dollars. A good example of that is your weight distribution hitch. And on average, they run between $500 and $1,000. And some can even run as high as $3,000. And then once you get the hitch, you have chalks, you have leveling systems, you have... Hoses. You name it. The list seems to be endless, and your Amazon shopping cart is going to go nuts. So, from what we've experienced, we would suggest that you plan to have a 5 to 10% budget of whatever you're spending on your Airstream to allocate for accessories after the buy. And just in case you're curious about some of the stuff that we've purchased along the way, we'll include a link to our Amazon store below. The second thing on our list that you're going to want to know for thinking about buying an Airstream in 2022 is you want to look at options for both purchasing a new Airstream or a used one. And there are pros and cons to both. Now, if you're looking for a new Airstream, the honest to God truth is that you're going to be waiting on average between six months and a year on the higher end. And if you're looking for a special edition, like a Pottery Barn edition, it could be even longer. Which sounds crazy, but it's the world that we live in today. Some of the things that we love and one of the reasons that we chose to go ahead and go with the new Airstream, even though we did have some wait time that was associated with it, was it has the factory warranty, which is good for a year. And it basically means any surprises, and trust me, there are always surprises with every Airstream, no matter if you buy it new or used, is on the factory to fix. Granted, you've got to get it into a dealership to get it fixed, but because it's covered under that warranty, it's not going to cost you anything more. On the flip side, if you purchase used, well, that's on your wallet. Now, the good news is if you are shopping for a used Airstream, there are plenty of forums online where you can find the Airstream of your dreams. The plus side is that you're always going to have either an aging population that is aging out of the RV space, or you have plenty of people that are changing size. They're either going from a smaller Airstream to a bigger Airstream, or they're going from a bigger Airstream to a smaller Airstream, or just changing to an entirely different model altogether. And we've recently heard from friends who are shopping that the market for used Airstreams has gotten a little less nuts. So there are actually some good deals to be had out there versus a new Airstream we're not hearing about a whole lot of wiggle room from the dealerships. Now, the only advice I would give you is that if you find a used Airstream and it's a great deal, you're going to want to pounce on it pretty quickly because it's not going to be there for long. Mm -mm, definitely not. That leads us to number three on our list. Not all dealerships are created equal. There are some that you are going to absolutely love dealing with. And there are others, maybe not so much. So our recommendation is to really get to know your dealership before you pull the trigger on a new Airstream purchase because you're going to want to develop a relationship with that Airstream dealership and the team that works there. Some tips that we would give for this is A, you want to talk to more than just your sales team member because they're not going to be the person that you're going to be dealing with post 
purchase. And it's really important that you find a team that is super responsive, not just at the sales level, but throughout the organization. So, so take some time to talk to your salesperson and ask them if you can talk to somebody who's in the tech side. Ask them more of your technical questions. What kind of response time do you get for those kinds of requests? All of that really matters because in the long run, communication is really what makes or breaks a dealership. And because you're probably new to Airstream or at least purchasing a new unit, you're going to have tons of questions. So if they're willing to answer some of those questions, then you're already off to a good start. I mean, don't feel bad about like becoming their best friend. I feel like we hear so many people who are like, I'm worried that I'm annoying them. That's not the point. You're buying a luxury RV. You should be able to ask all of those questions and not feel like you're being a bother by any stretch of the imagination. And just to add to that, you're really buying into a community of Airstreamers as well. So beyond the dealerships, you also have a network of people within the community that will help as well. Ah, but the last thing, talking about buying a new one and dealerships not all being created equal, we would highly suggest don't just talk to the dealership who's nearest to you from a geographical standpoint. It's really tempting to only do that, but if you want to get the best deal, you're probably going to have to talk to a couple people. That's true. And if you don't have a great relationship with a tech team there, you're probably gonna be driving further to get your repairs done as well. So it's very, very important that you select the appropriate Airstream dealership for you. Now that we've covered some of the basics, let's talk about number four on our list, size, matters. And it matters for a couple of different reasons. First, Airstreams can range from the eetle bitty to 33 feet long, which is kind of massive when it comes to a travel trailer. But one of the things you want to think about when you're purchasing an Airstream is how do you imagine your Airstream life to look? So for example, if your goal is to simply spend more time outdoors, you probably want to look for a smaller Airstream. Less space means you'll actually be outside. On the other hand, if you want to live full time like we do, you may want to look at one of the larger Airstreams. It's going to give you more kitchen space, more storage space for your stuff, so because you're definitely going to need clothes for every season. And that just may make more sense. It's all about how you envision your Airstream life. Now on the topic of larger Airstreams, here's another consideration as well. When you're considering an Airstream that is 25 feet or greater, the width of the Airstream goes from eight feet to eight and a half feet. And at that point, it is considered a wide body Airstream. So you're going to have some additional weight considerations as well, which comes into play when you're selecting the proper tow vehicle. Yeah, so we ran into this problem. When we first started shopping for our Airstream, we were driving a Mercedes SUV. I loved that vehicle, and my thought process was, of course, we would just tow the Airstream with that. But we fell in love with the Airstream Classic, which can weigh up to 10,000 pounds. And that's basically a requirement that you're going to need a truck. And not just any truck. Probably a three-quarter ton truck. Now, believe me when I tell you, I was the first one to try to tow this thing with a Ford F-150 Raptor but logical minds prevailed and we ended up going with a three quarter ton truck, which is an F-250. And we really love her. We do, yeah, it has all of the comforts of our Mercedes and it tows our Airstream safely, which for us is number one. The last thing that I would note about how size can matter in purchasing an Airstream is it's going to make a difference in the places that you can stay. Anything that is 25 to 30 feet is considered a larger travel trailer. And there are going to be national parks and other parks across the country that you simply don't fit into. Um, and so if you're really serious about wanting to stay in the national parks, you may wanna consider doing something smaller than 25 feet so that you can live that dream. We found that it doesn't really inhibit our Airstream life. There's typically a RV park or a boondocking area near and around the actual parks. And since we tend to be more like last minute people, uh, those campgrounds are ones that you typically have to book a year out in advance anyway. So parking somewhere close by works great for us and we just drive into the park, which is fun. 
The fifth thing on our list is probably something that is on your list of top concerns. Yes, it is going to be just as scary as you imagine it to tow and back up your Airstream. Now, honestly, just talking about this topic still gives me heart palpitations because I still remember the first time we pulled out of dealership and honestly, I was white knuckling that steering wheel and potentially you will too. And your partner who is sitting in the passenger seat if you've got one. This is scary for everyone. That's so true. And especially when it comes to backing up your trailer as well, because you, know, you just purchase this very expensive trailer and the last thing you want to do is damage it on day one. The good news is that it gets better. The best advice we can give to you is take things slow. Don't do something that is going to put you in a rush. When you need to leave a campground, leave ample time. I'm talking at least an hour to get everything set up so that you feel comfortable, you get behind the wheel, you don't feel like you're racing to the next campsite. Make sure that you put enough time in your schedule so that you're not getting there at night because driving at night makes it 10 times more scary than it has to be. Backing up at night is also more difficult because you can't see everything. Now, it's very important that you and potentially your partners traveling with you have a very good communication plan in place. And if you're traveling alone, don't be afraid to get out and take a look and survey the area before you even attempt to back up. Daniel still does this now, even though he's probably backed into more than 100 campsites. One of the easiest things you can do for your partner while they're backing up the Airstream is instead of saying turn right or turn left, which does not translate, Instead, say, go towards the passenger side or go towards the driver's side. It's universal language that makes sense to you and the person backing it up. And that was a game changer for us. And I will add even one more bonus tip. Instead of using cell phones, which is a very popular method for communications between the driver and the spotter, get pick up some walkie talkies. They work great and you never have to worry about bad cellular service. Number six on our list, things are going to break. And it's going to suck. The reality is that you're towing your home down the road, potentially over thousands of miles. And all of that vibration causes some things to break. And honestly, what we found learning our rig is that you are likely going to break some of the things yourself simply out of user error. The best thing that you can do is find the attitude that allows yourself a little bit of grace. Good example. A couple weeks into our first Airstream adventure, we were in Townsend, Tennessee. We were so excited about hiking the largest mountain in the state. And, well, we left our awning out. Now, in our defense, which there's very little defense, when we left to go hiking, the skies were crystal clear mm -hmm. and there was no wind in sight. Yeah, but the hike ended up taking significantly longer than we expected it to, and a storm came in. That was less than ideal. Oh, and then of course, we also may or may not have scratched the truck and busted a tail light and that was in the first 24 hours and on that note it is what it is things are gonna break and you can either duct tape them or in my instance i just silicone seal the tail light and just went about our day the faster you can decide that you're going to have an attitude of grace for yourself when stuff like this happens the more fun and enjoyable your Airstream experience is going to be. And that brings us to number seven. RVing has a lot of maintenance. It is not turnkey. Now, you're going to have to maintain everything from your lug nuts, which you'll want to torque periodically, to all of your lubricants that keep all the things moving smoothly. But you also have to take into account the fact that you have to maintain your truck as well. So you probably already are familiar with basic vehicle maintenance, which is cool. You do a lot of that with your Airstream. But then, depending on the number of different systems you have in your Airstream, those things have a fluid that needs to be filled up, a system that needs to be reset, like for example, our Aldi system. Daniel does maintenance work on that thing 
every couple of weeks. And it isn't one of those things that's just super quick either. You need to allocate time to do this stuff too. This brings us to number eight on our list. And this next topic is a pretty hot topic. Booking campgrounds in 2022 is probably going to be a little difficult. It might sort of super suck. So if you've watched many YouTubers, you've probably heard a lot of them talking about burnout, thinking about buying a house. There are so many more RVers that are out there now than there were even 24 months ago. And they're not wrong. It is true. But as long as you're willing to be flexible and can spend some time actually searching for and finding campgrounds and you have that expectation going into it, it's totally doable. It's just not really a fun part of the experience. Let's be honest. If you're looking to buy an RV and just roll right into Yellowstone National Park, it's just not going to happen without some proper planning. Truth. And even for people like us who typically like to be last minute planners, if you want to incorporate RVing or airstreaming into your lifestyle, whether it's on the weekend or it's a full-time gig, you're going to have to learn and be okay with spending a little bit more time planning, especially with finding campgrounds that you really love. And here's one of our favorite tips. When you call the campground, if you're looking for a long segment of time, let them know that you're flexible and you're willing to move spots because while they might not have one particular spot available for the entire duration you're looking for, they may be able to move you from one spot to a close by spot to cover the entire time you're looking for. Which is really super helpful. Now, number nine on our list is one that often gets overlooked. There are some ancillary costs involved with owning an Airstream. And you're going to want to budget for those. One of those is propane. If your unit runs off of propane, you're going to have to, of course, refill your propane, especially in colder climates. Good news is at most campgrounds, they either have it on site or they're somewhere close to do it. And it's not crazy expensive. For our 40 pound tanks on our Classic, we typically pay somewhere between 30 and $45 yeah. to fill up those tanks. And if you're gonna be camping in the winter, you may have to fill one of them up, especially if you're gonna be in freezing temperatures once every week and a half or so. That's true. And another consideration as well is that when you're towing, and especially if you're towing through toll booths, you're not only just going to have the four axles with your tow vehicle, you're potentially going to have two to four more additional axles to pay for with each and every toll. And there are certain states where the toll is significantly higher. Cha-ching. Double the cost of what it would be if you were traveling just in your car and not with an RV. That was mind-blowing to us. We have gone through tolls that have legitimately cost over $50 to oh, go through one toll. That's true. And then the next thing that we didn't really consider, and we should have when we were buying our Airstream, is that we needed a monthly allowance for gas. I don't think I'm going to be the first one to tell you that in 2022, gas prices just ain't what they used to be. So on average, if we're moving once a week, then we're typically spending anywhere between four and $500 a month on gas. So if you're making a budget, that's not insubstantial. And one thing I personally hadn't considered is that I was initially going off of the fuel consumption mileage listed on the paper when we bought our truck. But the reality is when you're towing, of course, you're consuming a lot more gas. So that brought our gas mileage down to roughly 12 to 14 miles a gallon. Yeah, you've made it. Tip number 10. And while this isn't the most positive tip on the list, it is something that I wish someone would have told us to set our expectations appropriately. Number 10, your first couple of camping trips might kind of suck and they're guaranteed to be stressful. And it's because you haven't learned about your Airstream yet, how it works, what you need, you left something at home. There are, that is so normal. For us, our learning curve took about three months, and that was us living in it full time. Now, granted, we decided that we would pick it up from the dealership, pack it in one day, and then drive 800 miles. 
bad idea. That will make it 10 times more stressful. We strongly suggest when you purchase your Airstream, make sure that you camp somewhere close to home. Or if you have a driveway that your Airstream will fit in, park in your driveway and stay the night in it for a couple nights. See what you need. What are you missing? It'll make it a lot less stressful. And here's another really cool tip I've learned about just recently. Some of the dealerships actually allow you to camp on site for the evening. So there's another option. But the biggest thing with this tip is that you don't get frustrated with yourself and burn yourself out thinking that, oh, I'm never going to get this. Because even though it can feel like that in the first couple of trips, we promise you can. And once you get over that hump, it's an incredible way to travel and explore. One of the things that we were talking about just the other day is that we traveled for a year and a half internationally in hotels and Airbnbs before we moved into our Airstream. And it's really, really a special way to be able to travel when you get to bring your home with you and still get to experience amazing new places on a regular basis. So it really is worth the headache, but don't let that initial reaction ruin your entire Airstream experience. That's so true. There have been a few instances where we've woken up and we've seen horses or wildlife outside of our bedroom window. And it's those moments, those moments like that, that make it all worth it, I promise. All right, so there you have it. Our top 10 tips for if you would like to buy an Airstream travel trailer in 2022 that you need to know because, well, now you're going to be simply significantly more prepared. Now, if you're watching this and you know there's something we've left out, be sure to leave a comment below. But until next week, friend, make sure you wander local, wherever you may be, because as you know, it's good for the soul. <laughs>